Hello guys, welcome back to the Beastie Room. Now, we've got an exciting little spider. And it is a little spider. An exciting little spider to deal with today. Now, um, we've been asked by some of our subscribers, it seems to have become a, a, a rather keen sort of comment, um, do we have any of the dwarf spiders? Well, yes we do. We have a number of them, different types. And um, funny enough, we've not actually done that much with them on the channel. We've not shown that many. Um, so today we are going to have a look at the Heterotheli gabonensis, which is the blue dwarf baboon spider. Now these come from Gabon in Africa and um, they're a terrestrial spider, an old world spider, and they only really get to about two inches. That's about their maximum size. So they don't actually get any bigger than that. They're a tiny, tiny little spider. Very exciting. Um, and they're, they're quite similar to the Mohonda that you would have seen we bred ooh, about a year, two years ago maybe, um, which was the first UK um, breeding of those guys. And uh, they're a very, very similar spider. Um, Talking of the Mahonda, we do actually, we have managed to procure a male. And it's taken two years to do that. So keep your eyes peeled because we're going to have a pairing of them as well. Um, and hopefully we can breed them again. But getting back to the blue dwarf tarantula. It is an amazing little spider. Now when we talk about um, speed in spiders, these guys are without a doubt probably the fastest thing I have had to deal with. They are super, super fast to the point where you don't even see where they've gone. And then they're gone and then all of a sudden they're back and then they're gone and then they're back and it's like, oh my God, what is going on? They are super, super fast, incredibly difficult to deal with. They really are hard to deal with. And um, yeah, they're just a Absolute bleeding nightmare. So, so quick. And um, they really get my nerves going, purely because if it disappeared in this room, a two-inch spider was going to be lost forever. And the males are so difficult to find that I am panicking before I've even opened the male's box. I am nervous before we've even started because I'm terrified I'm going to lose him. And, uh, and then it's back to the drawing board, you know. It's going to be really, really hard. But anyway, all that being said, Sit back, enjoy this footage. I don't think, I've not seen the, the Gabonensis paired on film before. So this is really, really quite exciting. It's great stuff, really nice images. So sit back, check it out, and uh, we'll be back shortly. Well, here we are about to introduce our male Heterotheli gabonensis. This is uh, quite often a spider re referred to as the Gabon blue dwarf baboon tarantula. Now these are incredibly fast. As you would have seen there, our male has just entered the arena. And uh, we keep our females in these uh, three litre bra plus tubs. And they seem to really, really do well in these. Um, there's our male there. We've just come down and we're filming through the side of the plastic. So it's not the best imagery. But we will see better, better images of him soon. Now you can see he's just about to start his courtship. You can see there he's slapping the floor. We're getting some really good vibration through him. Now these guys are very, very small. Um, our male there is only around about an inch and a quarter, maybe an inch and a half if we're very lucky. And our females are very similar size. Now they are um, classed as a semi-arboreal spider. And um, they, they often make, they're really, really strong webbers. So they do an awful lot of webbing and they make their homes up into leaves and in the branches and things. And they're often found up in trees. You know, they are absolutely an amazing little spider. 
Now the females with these last for around about seven years or so, and the males are much shorter lived. They're also in very high demand. We don't see very, ma very many males in the hobby. These males came from my good friend Stephen Bass, who has successfully bred these guys now up to, I think it's the fourth generation. Um, and he's also bred them communally. Now, it's been often stated that these guys can be kept communally. And uh, he did do a little experiment and he thought he'd give it a go. And sure enough, they did actually breed in a communal situation. Now, um, as with most of these so-called communal spiders, if they're not allowed the room to disperse, they will end up predating on one another. They will eventually eat one another. So although they are loosely communal, they do require a lot of space. And the more space you could give them, the far more successful they're going to be. Now you can see our male there, he's carried on doing his stuff and he's now slowly making his way around the enclosure. Now, we said earlier on about these guys being absolutely phenomenally fast and these really do get your heart rate pumping. They are super quick. I don't think we've actually had any spider that is as fast as these. Um, the Villacelli. Uh, are the same, uh, the Mohonda, the same. All of these tiny, tiny dwarf spiders are incredibly fast. There's our female. Now, she is a beautiful, beautiful blue colour in the light. They are absolutely stunning. As you can see there, they do a lot of webbing, and they often sit in the mouths of these burrows. So they are a semi-arboreal spider. So they will web up on the floor and they will go up into the trees as well. Where they have been known to be, you know, quite a few of them in one place. And there's our little male there now. And you can see there he's still doing his shaking. He's stomping his front feet. They are quite erratic spiders. Now look at that. She, he's called her over. He's not so sure. Look, he's having a little wander around. Here she comes. What a beautiful, beautiful spider. Absolutely gorgeous. It's lovely to see these guys up close. And even better to catch it on film. Again, I don't think I've seen these pairings being caught on film before. You would have remembered um, a year, two years ago, we were the first to breed them a Honda in the UK. And uh, we have some amazing footage. We have since managed to procure another male. It's taken two years. Um, and hopefully we will have some footage of another pairing with those guys. Now you can see our male there. He's managed to get in his mate contact with our female. See they're very similar sizes. She's got more colour about her. Look at the length of his pedipalps. They are huge. Really, really long for a spider as are hers. Now you can see now he's trying to get a decent angle. Lovely the way he literally stomps them feet down. Here we go. Now we've made really good contact and you can see now where he's trying to get purchase on her. He's trying to move her over. We've not seen any aggression from these. They've been really, really sweet little spiders. The length of those pedipals. Huge great emboli for a very small spider as well. There we go. You see now, look, he's very tentative. He's trying to actually reach in. You notice how he lifts himself up to gain a little bit of height over the female. Here we go. We've got insemination there. You see how she's buckled over. Look, he's pulled her right in. That's insemination there again. He swapped pedipalps. You can see that. He's changing them over. We're getting multiple inseminations there. Now you notice as he's backed off, he's maintained contact with the front two legs. He's kept a hold of her. And this is keeping her in the notion that we are actually still carrying on. We're not quite finished with you just yet. Look at that, he's going back in again. Another insemination there. Very successful. Now, now look, you notice how he's backing off, he's waving. Boom, he's gone. It's all over and done with. What a fabulous spider and a fabulous pairing. Really pleased with that.
Our female there is just looking absolutely gorgeous. Now we will try and pair these again and we'll see what happens. Look at the huge fangs for such a small spider. They are whopping great fangs. Look at those. Colouring on this girl is, you cannot appreciate it in the camera. They are better in life. Well, that was exciting. Fantastic. Well, what did you think to that? I think it's really, really cool. They are such an exciting spider, a really, really exciting spider. But they do come with their issues, as we were saying about the speed. Now, you'll see there that when we actually introduced our male, you only just about saw the pot coming in on the side, and he literally dives out. It's, it's in blink of an eye, like that, and he's gone. And then we've got a hope that he stays in there. But you'll have seen from that footage, he would wander around, then he'd wander out, then he'd come back in again. And, oh, it's, it's madness, absolute madness. They are really, really fun spiders, but um, they'll make me go grey. So what we done was we had a little plan of attack. And you'll often hear me say in the videos, always try and get yourself prepared for the job in hand. So have a look at this. this is how we attempted to get prepared to breed our Heterotheli gabonensis. The lightning fast, two inch, little dwarf baboon spider. Now then, we keep our females in these three liter bra plast tubs, and we fill them up with soil about halfway, as you've seen in the video there, you saw the video. And then we, we put leaves and bits and pieces in there because these guys actually, they're really heavy webbers. So they web everything up and then they web up the leaves and they'll often hide inside one of these leaves. They'll web it all through. Now, we've got no worries about her leaving this because her home is in here. She will use the sanctuary of her webbing to stay put. Obviously with our male, we've turfed him out. He's uh, He actually is living in one of these. So we've got to get him from here into here. And there's our little male there. You can see him sitting there now. He seems quite happy. He's waiting for his next outing. He's already, um, he's already done his, uh, his push-ups and everything this morning. So he's uh, super fit, super fast. So what we do is we have to try and get him from here into here. And you would have seen he jumped in and ran straight away. So once we got him in there, you think that's half the problem. Then obviously, once we've actually finished with the pairing, we've then got to try and catch him again. It is not as easy as it first looks. So what we do is we actually used one of these. This is a normal sling pot. And when our spider is out and about, we literally try and pop that over the top of him Nice and gently, not, not too old. Just nice and gently, so we don't want to break his legs. And um, he then shoots up into the sling pot. We get him in the sling pot. And then what we do is we get his old home and we put this literally inside there like that and put the lid on it and forget all about him. And then we come back later on in the day and he would have left the sling pot and he'd gone back into his burrow. We did, the first time round, we had him in the sling pot and we flicked him into his pot. He hit the pot and boom, gone. And we chased him around the table and we'd done all sorts of things. And we learned very quick in the beastie room. Do not flick them out into another little tub because they will not stay there. They're like a spring. So the idea being that we put our female's enclosure here inside this tray, which we fill with beastie mix as well. And you'll notice inside the tray here, there's lots of leaves, there's bits and pieces for our spider. Should he run out, he's going to hide. The, that was the idea. He was going to hide in amongst this stuff, which will slow him down, give us a chance to uh, catch him up. Well, it sort of worked, and it sort of didn't work, because the first time he literally ran across the tray, up the side, out, under the thing and he sat underneath the ledge of our table and we thought wow once again the beastie table has come into action and saved the day so we were quite chuffed with that we got him in our sling pot we put him back in our females enclosure he done his little dance done his little bit 
Then he ran away again. This time, the beastie table failed, and he went out, up the ledge, down the side, hit the carpet, and just sat there. And I was absolutely terrified. I actually, I did take a big in, in big gasp of breath um, because I thought, oh my God, we're going to lose him. So then I got me cricket tub and I caught him in the cricket tub. And uh, that's where he stayed for the next half hour while we went and had a stiff drink and worked out a plan of attack. And what you saw in the end of the video was the, the final result of a successful pairing. So not all things are really easy and we have to change how we do things to to actually make them fit and to make them work this is just a very very exciting spider if you've got a good size bath and you've got a couple of these at home try them in the bath it's got to be safer um, but don't always guarantee that it won't run up the bath because we've had spiders run clean up the bath as well so um, back in the early days so uh, yeah, they are very, very exciting. Now, fingers crossed, we are gonna get these to um, drop a sack. We will pair them again. We've got another um, adult female, which we are pairing as well, which we will also make a film of, and uh, because they often act differently. So it'd be good to see two different ones and see them side by side, see what they do. We are lucky enough to have two males. Now, we managed to um, get our males from our good friend, Steve Bass, um, who has, in fact, bred these on, he's on his fourth generation now. So they are bred in captivity. Um, we've just never seen it caught on film, but they are bred in captivity. A number of people have done them. Um, and they are supposed, they've been given tendencies to be a communal spider. And this is because in the wild, they actually live up in the trees. They're a semi-arboreal spider. Um, but in the wild, they get into the trees because they've got like a loose bark and a loose um, leaf system, and they web up all in these, and these spiders have been found to be within close proximity of one another. Now, Stephen tried this in by keeping a communal of them. He bred, and he kept them all together, and he let them mature up, and they actually did, in fact, breed again within that communal. Unfortunately, as time goes on, they will eventually, if they're not given enough room to disperse, and we're talking quite a lot of room, they will predate on one another and they will eventually eat one another. So they are communal in the loosest form of the, of the term, you know, in the loosest sense of the term. So not something I would suggest you do. I would better off keeping them separately and, uh, and breeding them separately. They do far, far better. Now, um, we are going to leave them now in a bit of peace and quiet and hopefully they'll drop their sacks and uh, we will get some babies. That will be a really, really cool thing. So, much to be learned and uh, much more to be learned while we're on this journey. An amazing journey. These are fantastic spiders. And the spiders really that should be seen more in the hobby. And I'm hoping that now you've seen the beauty of them females, it didn't come out so well in the film, but they are in actual real life. They are actually almost like a midnight blue. They are very, very pretty with that white banding on them as well. Now, one thing you will see is the female in this particular video is quite freshly malted. So she looks really, really stunning. The other female that we've got, she's um, further along in her malt. So she is a little bit duller, a little bit darker. Um, although she is a slightly bigger spider as well. She's the biggest one we've got. Um, we do also have a couple of others a um, couple of other females which are almost ready to pair. We might try them because we've got these males. And as we said, they're very difficult to get hold of. Um, we just don't see them very often. So uh, we need to make use of them as and where we can. Um, but it's really, really exciting times. Very excited about this little project. Right then. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, don't forget, be calm, be gentle, and love your spider. And I will see you soon, guys.